Welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry. Folks, on the way into the studio today, we had a really interesting chat about going back to the gym and basically all the changes that happen when you go back in terms of hunger and in terms of how you feel. And we thought, myself and my wonderful producer, Tabitha, that we would do this episode uh, unscripted, live on air, ready to rock, because we think there's lots of people around the country doing the very same thing. They're feeling revved up with the good weather, they're back in the gym, and they're just trying to get their heads around all the changes that come from that. So Tabitha, normally you're in my ears, welcome. Normally your ears giving out to you, yeah. I know, I know, I know. This is a bit weird. This is kind of fun. Yeah. So it's back in the gym. Back in the gym. Yes. Yeah, I think I think we should be honest how we first started this conversation. We sat down and you went, wow, you look exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh no. And I, and it, 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 you were absolutely right. Yeah. I work is crazy busy and I've decided that it's time to go back to the gym. And I have been doing it, but I've been getting up early in the morning to yeah. do it before work. And I think probably nothing of the other bits and pieces that go along with that have followed through. So like my food or my sleep haven't followed. And I, obviously I need to get that sorted. Do you like getting up early? No, hate it. Oh, I could lie in forever. I hate it. But you know that that feeling when you're up, you're really tough with yourself and you're yeah. a little bit smug that you're up at half yeah. six in the morning or yeah. whatever it is. So no, I hate it. But I know that if I don't do it in the morning, I will never do it. So by the end of the day, forget about it. I'm going home and I'm watching the TV. Okay, so get up early, get it done. And that's, yeah. for people listening in, is a key thing. We see it all the time with the Q&As we do on Instagram. I'm too busy, I'm too busy. And therefore, get it done, get out of the way early. And it's the tips that we hear from people coming on the podcast as well. And I feel like I've been sitting in the galley watching these podcasts and I'm absorbing the information. And a lot of what people say is just get up in the morning and mm -hmm. get it done. So then you don't have to think about it. And it is me lying my clothes out the night before. So Ooh, you planning. don't get out oh, because if I don't, if I have to try and do it in the morning, I'm not getting there. So it, there's been a lot of planning. But as a result, I'm, as you said, I am exhausted. Yes, yeah, so two weeks in and you are really, really tired. I'm exhausted. I can't, and I'm sleeping better than ever. Yeah. I, you hit the bed at, I don't know, 10 o'clock and, and I'm sleeping like a log, but I'm, I don't feel rested then. So I don't know what that's about. The clock is late. I'm in bed, is by, I'm in bed by nine. <laughs> yeah, every, every night. Like, like, like clock. Although Love Island is on now and watching a bit of, watching a bit of Love Island. Okay, so, uh, and from the, okay, so you've increased your movement food wise then. Yeah. That changed. Yes, it has. Um, I, I think I am eating better, but I don't think I'm eating enough. Yeah. And I think that's what the issue is. And partly it's because I think there's a little bit, and maybe I'm a little bit ashamed of saying that I'm afraid to eat too much because I don't want it to impact. Oh, yeah. Or the exercise. The oh, exercise. Yeah, okay. So I don't, I'm doing really well. And, and it, it's an awful lot of effort to, to go to the gym or go for a run. And I don't want to hinder that by eating too much and I yeah. think it's trying to find that sweet spot of you're yeah. fueling yourself and able to do the exercise that you want to do yeah. interesting mm. okay really common we see it with lots of people uh, the key thing there is is bringing your protein intake up so when you're exercising you're obviously tearing your muscle fibers apart you're putting more effort out you're burning more calories which is great but you need to match that with the fuel source so your protein or DA needs to come up to about one and a half to two grams per kilo body weight that's so much. Which, like, I always put that in, like, chicken breasts. Cause I think it's easy. Yeah. Or eggs. Like, yeah. three eggs is a, is, a, is a portion, say, a protein. Or a protein shake is about 30 grams. Chicken breast, fish, uh, fistful of protein is about 30 grams, yeah. roughly. So you're probably looking at, like, you know, nine eggs worth of protein. Not eggs, but like, you wouldn't have nine eggs in a day. But in terms of the visual indicator. So basically, protein with every meal. And then if you're still fatiguing, you increase your protein intake up. It's so difficult. I, I don't know about listeners. I find it really difficult to get protein in. And it's not, I'm not a vegetarian and I don't dislike protein sources. I just find it very difficult to incorporate it in or feels like it's too much. Yeah. So what I've been relying on is the likes of protein yogurts Lovely. or yeah, protein milk. Yeah. I'm not mad on the protein powders. I find them really sweet grainy, and they can be a little yeah. bit, for me, a bit sickly. Yeah. Um, so the protein milk, like just the just the plain milk, the, you know, the Aldi or the Avonmore or Tesco, they all have their own brands of, of protein milk at this stage. I I'll just drink that. But then... I'm thinking then, what about the kind of calories in that? Yeah. Do, because I'm drink now I'm drinking the calories instead yeah. of the instead of just water. Yeah. So one of the things people do when they eat proteins, your BM or your your, the, your body has to work harder to process that and digest that. So you, you have a higher burn rate of calories from processing that food, 
which is why you get more from it than when you eat it as opposed to drinking it. Uh, ideally, yeah. Okay. Chicken, fish, yeah. meat, and like for you know, every every meal or certainly two of the three meals a day of the main meals should have a be a big protein source in it. Mm. And that's your recovery. So then you're not going to fatigue as much. You're going to train better. You're going to train harder. You're going to recover faster. And from a calorie perspective, you'll have a basal metabolic rate of calories, which you'll burn without exercise. You add in your exercise on top of that, and you'll still have a deficit left over from, or from a atoning perspective or, a, or, or whatever the goal is. That's, you know, because otherwise you just get burnt out. And that's exactly how I'm feeling right now is yeah. burnt out. And I, I, so many people do this as well, is that you go in and you are so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. You think, this is it. This is the time that it is going to stick. Yep. And I want that to stick so badly. But then life just gets in the way. Yep. And it is that thing of being tired and just not being able to manage it. So I can't just say, okay, bye podcasts. I can't work anymore. <laughs> I have to go to the gym. Like that's not yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. how yeah. you deal with that. It ends up being the gym or the exercise, the run that you decide to do that you can no longer do because yeah. priorities come in yeah. there. Of course. So the food's got to go up. Got to eat more. And if people are listening in and they are going to the gym and starting to go, to go back training, you should never be exercising and, reduce, and changing your food around to the point at which you feel exhausted because it's not sustainable I'm and it's not healthy and something will give. The other challenge is that exercising early in the morning is deadly. But when you really don't like it, it's a push. Yes, that's true. And it's trying to shift the exercise routine around a little bit to work a little bit more for you. So maybe once during the week you get up early or maybe twice during the week you get up early. And the exercise at the weekend a little bit later for what suits your kind of structure. Like I hate exercising early. I can't deal with it. I just don't like it. I hate it with a passion. So I'll exercise later in the day or even in the evening when I prefer to. Okay. And I find that works better uh, because it's very difficult to fight against something. Yeah, what, what, I, I, what I find... It for me, it's it's about getting it into my day, so yeah. that's why I throw it in yeah, the morning. Yeah, yeah. But what I find really difficult is actually fueling that morning work. Oh, yeah, so something okay. maybe you can yeah. shed some light on yeah. as well, because you get up early. I don't know. For me, it's half six, so I can get to my gym class at the mm -hmm. moment f for seven. Um, waking up early in the morning and eating immediately because yeah. you kind of have to because you don't have the time some, some people need to some people don't so some people can exercise on an empty tummy there is a whole sector of society who will think they're going to burn loads more body fat by doing that they won't really it's it's yes you do but it's minimal unless you're going for really long fasted cardio runs and stuff and even that's not ideal uh so you don't have to eat but something small toast with a little bit of jam is really handy brown toast with jam fruit's really good coffee as a stimulant like you'll have enough energy from the day before and your fuel cells and stuff to put that's what I wanted to know because yeah. I'm the exercises or the, the gym classes that I'm doing at the moment it was actually Rory McInerney that we had on oh, the yeah. podcast yeah, yeah. a few weeks ago when he said if you're under time pressure which is how I feel at the moment yeah do your gym classes or something that is, it starts at a certain time and it finishes at a certain it's time. It's finite. It's, so, it's finite and yeah. you know that by X time you are going to be able to walk out and go home and you're not waiting around for a machine, which is what I tried to do. Actually, it was probably this time last year. Okay. I gave it three weeks and it just didn't, it didn't last. It really just, I, I went well, when your time, hard. When you're time poor, the exactly. exercise has to be maximum efficiency and exactly. a class will do that. But they're very, they can be very intense as yeah, is the nature of yeah. exercise classes. So yeah. that's, I'm always a little bit worried to go into them fasted. Yeah. So the fasted thing won't, won't be an issue. If anything, the intensity is going to increase the fatigue. So you reduce the intensity by dropping the weight. So you reduce the, the weight down that you use into a lighter weight. You lower the intensity a little bit so that you're giving your body enough time to recover. Because, you know, chronic under-recovery, just, it just ends up in, you, just, you know, you're ringing sick to work because you can't get out of bed. There is a point, though, you'd have to, there has to be a certain amount of resistance there, though, for you, it to work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, 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 it's finding the sweet spot between resistance and recovery. So, like, when you finish the workout, for example, you should be within the first half an hour window. That's where your, your, your protein milk comes in really handy. So, say, it's in, you, know, you bring it with you to the gym on the way home, drink the milk, but then you're having a meal... Six, you know, 30, 60 minutes after that, which is where ideally on a breakfast level. So that's going to be breakfast. So yes. give me some options there because... Yeah, so like breakfast, uh, eggs, 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 eggs. We love eggs. That would be really boring. High protein granola with some some Greek yogurt works really well. Uh, or porridge uh, with a protein milkshake will, will, will work quite well. Eggs in any way, shape or form. 
We love eggs. They're just amazing. And they're so cheap. And they're so cheap and they're so handy. Again, I, I feel like I'm them. coming on and I'm saying, this is so difficult, this is so difficult. I'm not a great egg eater. So yeah. I'm, I think it's one of those things yeah, though that you, you have to do. stuff that you like. Yeah. So like, you know, so yeah, high protein granola will work really well. Uh, porridge with nuts and seeds will work really well. You can get protein kind of, um, they're like nut mixes you add on to the porridge. They can work quite well too. Uh, or just add in a protein shake with it. So then you get, you're going to get your breakfast with the shake. You'll be really full, but you're getting extra protein in to recover. Yes, they are extra calories, but not a bad thing because they're really healthy stuff. Like, you know, no one died from too much porridge. It, you know, porridge, it's great. And again, it's super cheap. Uh, so that's your breakfast sorted. Then you get to every three hours, you're getting some form of food in. Every three hours. Yeah. So that's a good That's a good signpost, snack, actually. Lunch, yeah. snack, dinner. Okay. So like, say you're, you hit work for whatever, nine, ten, or maybe earlier. But every three hours roughly is food time. So okay. breakfast, snack, which is nu- uh, fruit and portion of nuts or seeds, which is like palm size. Then you get to lunch. Uh, and it, if it's a wrap or something like that, it's brown, it's whole grain, it's whole meal, protein and color. Okay. Or like there's a deli salad bar around the corner uh, or next door. Oh, yeah. In the, yeah, in the shop next door. The, again, you go for your protein source, which will be some form of meat or something, eggs or whatever. And then your color Add it in, mid-afternoon, snack, and then dinner. It's a lot of prep. You need to be kind of prepared see, for this. I see, and people give out to me for my fridge game, that it's slightly <laughs> obsessive. It is obsessive, absolutely. You know me well enough, I have an obsessive personality. But actually, it's the prep bit. Yeah. So, like, on the train, I came up from the train this morning. Uh, last night, I uh, got water. Uh, I had a protein shake. I had a flap, a, fl- a flapjack a fruit. What else? Did I? I think I have another protein shake for the way home, and I grabs. I got some lunch just before this. So like it, the prep thing is important. Yeah, you got to have on a Monday. Come in whatever day you come in. You know, start of the week on Monday. Bring in the stuff, and leave it in so it's there, and then you can just grab at it all week. That I makes think it's it, much easier. And what also helps is there is especially at the very beginning, and that's this is what I'm feeling at the moment is being really overwhelmed. So because you're trying to make mm-hmm. the changes and the good changes and the yep. changes you want to make but it's just an awful lot. So like the exercise, I think probably for me is the easiest yep. thing to do because it's going to a class, I do it and then I'm done. done. The food, I get very overwhelmed by. And because yep. you know yourself and, and something that we try and cut through on the podcast, yep. but and it's inevitable, you do, there's so much messaging around the food and the and everything. It's confusing. Yeah. Yeah, and even every now and again, I get confused by it. Where like, you're reading a new article, you're reading whatever, and you're like, how does that work? Yeah. Or, or, you know, but actually you ship it right back and it's it's very basic. And like, there isn't a need to calorie count with it really. Because like, good food that is naturally made, that you cook or prep yourself, has is naturally lower in calories than all the really kind of ultra processed stuff. We know all the ultra processed research, but it's about basic, simple food is naturally just lower in calories, like fruit and veg. And that's why they, they say, you know, loading up your plate with half salad or half veg. It's filling, but it's ch- and it's cheap. There's nothing in it. Yeah. Uh, but the protein is important because, A, because you've got to work hard to break it down. But that's what gives you the, the results in terms of tone, shape, strength, wellness, yeah. all of that. It's just that you feel stronger. And so, so what I've been doing at the moment is uh, resistance training, yeah. something that we have spoken so I many know. times in the podcast yep. about that I know that that's where the results are going to be. And I, I don't actually have a particular goal. It isn't a weight loss goal or maybe it is gaining muscle, but it's just it's the longevity thing, yeah. which, again, we have talked about on this podcast so many times. But with the weights come the doms. Yes, Oh, and that, this is another so thing that I was telling yes. you on the phone earlier this yeah. week. I went to a class and the, and in fairness, I don't think the PT was wrong who was leading the class. It was like, push yourself a little mm-hmm. bit, get a weight that's a little bit heavier. And then if you need to amend it in the middle of the class, go for it. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I just went for it. They were too heavy. In a group class scenario, which is super competitive. Exactly. And, yeah, and yeah. that's it because yeah. you don't want to be the person who no. comes off, no, no, no. who comes down in the weight. Yeah. I didn't do it. And I couldn't walk the next day. I was in so much pain yeah. the next day. So I suppose it's, A, how do you know too much is too much? And then yeah. when you do have the DOMS, what do, what you, do? do you do? Okay. To, so the, the, the intensity of the work is really important because that's what that, by doing too much, we would always say to people, you should be struggling on the last two reps or whatever the exercise is. If it's mountain climbers, the last two should be hard. If it's bicep curls, the last two should be hard. If you're struggling like really early on in the set, it's too heavy. 
and you're and plus then what happens then is you start using your legs to press it or, your, or the back starts to curl though it's you know so uh but very common in group settings because people are super competitive and they go for like bilio so the key thing there is that you slow it down a little bit but also you drop the weight to struggle with the last two repetitions uh the other thing on that is that if you're just easing into it you go one set on like day one two sets on day whatever when you've begun to recover a little bit quicker recovery slower when the food's poorer so if you're not eating enough protein you're going to take longer to recover okay that obviously. makes sense uh it's one of the components of fitness is the ability to recover quite quickly so like with pt clients we work with we build them up so they can recover overnight it's very quickly because the, it's one of the element the ways they get fitter uh what else do you do stretching is important cold is nice if you like it but you don't no one I likes it. it yeah so like no one really likes it even like you're a big fan of sea swimming and i, I don't am but i'm in the wetsuit it. i'm i'm a yeah. cheater yeah and in all fairness i've only that since like middle of march because i got brain freeze when i was in in march it was so cold that after 20 minutes i was just <laughs> freezing um but the cold it does help you to recover but only if you really like to do it yeah hot bath with epsom salts that's it and school. which i love i, I love a hot yep. bath with some epsom salts it's so warm at the moment though the thought yep. of a hot bath yeah is uh, i had a friend i had a friend once who used to use his wheelie bin in the hot weather uh and put uh, and jump into it and use it as an outdoor bath which i'm not recommending you do because uh, it's slightly disgusting and just no uh so what else uh yeah so it's, it's stretching it's easy gentle movement actually uh, and rest and recovery and food what i have found is good i, I do have a massage gun oh yeah, yeah and yeah, they yeah, are yeah, great yeah. They are, but it's when do you use it after uh, is it directly after exercise yeah. or do you or, wait till the next day no, whenever <laughs> Oh yeah. I, I did. I left it till the next day and I couldn't use it. Yep. It was that painful. <laughs> it was too much. I just couldn't do it. I don't think you're gonna be I think a lot of our listeners will be going through a lot of that too, yeah. right? You get that and that's a hard doms. And it's always you just get too enthusiastic. You gotta pull back and be a bit more we do, did a thing on Insta, a reel on Instagram recently but, but for people in their 40s how to stay healthy. And part, it, within it, I put, you know, a couple of times, remember, you are 40. You should know better. Or and went for like elimination yeah. diets and stuff like that. Yeah. But actually, you get caught up in the competitiveness of it. But it's about just recognizing that it takes time to build up. And it's, it, but you want to grasp onto that motivation. You do. You know? Oh, absolutely. In time. And it's trying, to, it's, it's trying to keep that. Mm. But once the fatigue begins to override everything else, we're just like, oh my God, I wrecked. Motivation begins to dwindle quite quickly, you know. So it's about pulling it back a little bit and mixing and matching the exercise and having some more, an extra lie in or two in the morning. And what about now at the moment? We mentioned and I mentioned having a, a bath in the heat, but exercising in the heat at the moment. Yeah. I don't mind going for the odd run. I am not a fan of running. Uh, my boyfriend is, so he kind of drags me along to them, uh, which is, I mean, fair play to him. But <laughs> the heat at the moment, I'm just like, yeah, oh God, warm. I'm going to go very out warm. and I will collapse. Yep. Time of the day, very important. Uh, if it's indoors, a ventilated room, bring water with you as a comforter. We don't need water when we run, actually, for anything. Well, when you start going further than 10K, you might do. But below that, we have enough water and enough fuel in it. So you don't need carbogels or jellies or special carby diets or anything. You just, you just run. Um, what else? The gear, the clothing is important. Cotton-based fabrics are horrific because it just gets sweaty and disgusting and they just make you feel really not nice. So the lighter fabrics are really important. Um, and you generally shorten the, 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 the movement and the amount of it that you do. So a big, long run of the heat is no crack. You just shorten the run a little bit. Um, and bar that, it's going to be warm for a while. Yeah, that's yeah. it, because we're only at the beginning of the summer yeah. and I don't want to say, okay, that's the end of the running or the cardio outside because you want to be out in we that do, yeah. weather. Yeah, absolutely. You don't, don't want to, you don't necessarily want to go to the gym to be on the treadmill when it's something you can do no. outside. Time of day, just pick a, a, a cooler time. Obviously, you avoid the middle of the day where it's at its warmest and then it's a cooler time later on in the evening is an ideal time to go. Okay. And plus, then you have the lie-in as well. So you, 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 you kind of ticks a couple of boxes. Okay. The last thing I wanted yeah. to ask you because I... And, I have been this person who is like, this is the moment I am going to nail it. I'm going to be this healthy person. I'm going to be the person that goes to the gym or goes for a run. This is this is when it's going to stick. Mm -hmm. But it never sticks. And it's for whatever reason, like I said earlier, life gets in the way. Yeah. How, how shall I do that now? How can I Ooh, keep okay. it going? Because... I, I'm I'm only two weeks in and I'm feeling like this is it now. I've yeah. done it. It's, it's normal for it not to stick. Okay. That's normal. Even for myself, it doesn't stick all the time, depending on life, okay. how chaotic life is. When it's really busy, 
like when the TV shows on early in the year, I always get to kind of halfway through that and then I stop exercising. Wow, okay. I can't exercise because I just get to, the association of exercise becomes an association with work. Yeah. And I just stop exercising. Every, every, and then I gain about three or four pounds over the course of the of February or more sometimes. Uh, and actually, as you get older, you accept that a little bit. You're like, that's okay. I'm under pressure by being on national television. I'm stressed because I'm on national television. And I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. So you just back away and okay. then it comes back once the show finishes generally. So it's normal that it's, 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 it's normal that it doesn't stick because okay. it doesn't stick for everyone all the time. Yeah. But there are peaks and troughs during the year where you're hyper motivated mm -hmm. and you nail all the stuff and you feel great. And then there's other variants of that where you're exhausted or, you know, so it does change like that. The key thing is to be mature enough to step back and say, okay, look, that's okay. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay to, to have to, for, to, for it to come and go. The key thing is that you build it around your schedule as much as you can. You keep planning. You trust in the fact that every bit you do is going to make you a little bit healthier uh, and and uh, stronger, but that it isn't always perfect. Yeah. And it's okay to fall off the wagon and have a takeaway every now and again. That can be difficult because I think the two of us are quite like that in that we like things oh, to very be structured. perfect Absolutely. and have and either you're yeah. doing it or you're not doing it. And I think it's finding that middle that ground. That 20 approach. And that, that took me 15 years to get my head around. It was like... Okay, well, look, I can have a pizza and not worry about it and enjoy it, and you know, and that comes with with that comes with maturity, I think, where you're just a little bit easier on yourself, and you realize, for uh, for me anyway, from a work perspective, that's what we try and teach our clients is that it's eighty twenty. So have the pizza. Like we, I, someone who started a few weeks ago, like very vigilant, too vigilant actually, and I encourage him to go and have a takeaway because I was like, this is life. Yeah. Or they wouldn't have a drink. So have a drink. Like, oh, well, it's got calories. I don't care. Life is far too short. So, like, the key thing is that it's balance. It's a it's stuff that we kind of talk about a good bit on the show. It's it's a balanced approach. It's setting the right goals. It's easing off when you're exhausted. It's ensuring that you you look at all the aspects of health, which are like sleep, food, movement, stress, uh, and just the general just life. And they all kind of interlink a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and realizing that, yeah, it will go through peaks and troughs. Well, that's normal. And no one gets it right. Inst you know, I'm always hyping on about Instagram, but like Instagram people get it right all the time. They look as if they do. They don't. It doesn't make it look that way. And that is if you're looking at that all the time, which I am. I'm still a big Instagram person. Yeah. You know, I do, not that I post, <laughs> but I like to watch. <laughs> you to be on it I don't. <laughs> But I do like to watch, and it is that idea that people are hitting the gym at least four yeah. or five times. And they're not. You know, they're not. And those who are have nothing better to do. You know, or they're, or they're, you look at them and they're slightly obsessed. And that's not good either. Yeah. Um, the, the obsession with health is not a positive thing either, right? So it's it, it's it's just balance. And it's just been okay about it. Is there a, a certain number that like you, that I should be hitting every week? Magic. No. Government RDA is 180 minutes a week. Okay. Three hours a week. That's okay. what, of moderate intensity exercise. That's what every the government tells us we should all be doing. The magic number really though is one that suits your schedule. Yeah. So like during the summer, my life is quieter. I tend to race in the summer. Uh, I tend to train harder in the summer because I've just got more time. I'm not traveling as much. So it kind of depends on how busy or how quiet you are. But it, that's been fun. There that was good. Go. Crack the chat. Yeah, I was a bit nervous coming on. I know. <laughs> That was normally in my ear telling me what to do. I want to ask people. I want not to ask people and everything else in between. It's been lovely to chat. And uh, listeners, I really hope you enjoyed that. A, you got to meet Tabitha. And but B, I think that a lot of those questions, and that's why we thought about doing this episode. We've never done this in no, five and never. a half years of podcasts. But uh, a lot of people, I think, are going through the same thing. And we'll really associate with uh, with that. If you have any questions about your training or your exercise, do send us an email. Uh, it's realhealth at independent.ie or at Carl Henry PT on Instagram. We really hope that you liked the episode. Thank you, Tabitha, for joining me. Thank you. And we will see you next week for more Real Health Salon Gaffold. <laughs>